the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we are united in prayer to thank the Father for gathering us today as one church, as one family. The Gospel today concludes with Jesus' instruction on the importance of remaining united with the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. The Spirit can also be described as the union, the love of the Father and the Son. As such, the Holy Spirit is the key to our victory over darkness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we can remain united with Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of God's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for, for me, me to the, the Lord, Lord our, our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father of every gift, we confess that all we have and are comes down from you. Teach us to recognize the effects of your boundless care and to love you with a sincere heart and with all our strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Samuel. All the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the children of Israel out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, you shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned 
for 40 years, seven years and six months in Hebron over Judah, and 33 years in Jerusalem over all Israel and Judah. Then the king and his men set out for Jerusalem against the Jebusites who inhabited the region. David was told, you cannot enter here. The blind and the lame will drive you away, which was their way of saying, David cannot enter here. But David did take the stronghold of Zion, which is the city of David. David grew steadily more powerful, for the Lord of hosts was with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. a vision, and to your faithful ones you said, On a champion I have placed a crown, over the people I have set a youth. found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand upon the sea, his right hand upon the rivers. Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said of Jesus, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder his house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing for the blessing. be seated. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we said at the beginning of the Mass, we truly give thanks to God for having gathered us as one community, as one family of faith, as one archdiocese as one church and we thank God for the calling that we have received not just individually but as one community to witness to his gospel to serve his name in our neighbor and to be the sign that God truly reigns, there is much to thank the Lord for. As we sang at the beginning of Mass, Bayang tinawag ng Ama kay Jesu Cristo. Just that already deserves our gratitude and thanksgiving. To be called by the Father in Jesus Christ to be one body, one people, the people of God, the body of Christ, the living temple of the Holy Spirit. But what does it mean to give thanks? Don't get offended, ha? Tinitignan ko lang kayo, parang mukhang hindi naman nagpapasalamat, eh. Oh, ayan, nagmukha na, medyo. Ano? <laughs> but what, what really does it mean to give thanks? No? We, we, uh, those are some of the early, first words that we learn as children. Salamat, thank you, thanks. No? Yeah. But uh, what does it mean? 
especially if we have readings like those that we have today. From the second book of Samuel, David succeeding to Saul as the king and the tribes of Hebron really begged him, be our king. But then, the people of Jerusalem sent word to David, you cannot enter here. But David still took the city of Zion and he became more powerful steadily coming from Jerusalem the holy city the message of rejection kapag ba sinabihan ka wag kang pumasok sa bahay ko Salamat po. Ayaw kong makita ang mukha mo. Salamat po. Anong ginagawa mo dito? Layas. Salamat po. No. What does it mean to give thanks? Then in the gospel, from Jerusalem again. Ewan ko ba itong Jerusalem na ito? In the first reading, from Jerusalem came the message to David, you cannot enter. In the gospel, from Jerusalem, the scribes said of Jesus, he is possessed by the prince of demons. Yeah, you see him performing miracles driving out demons. Uh, why can he do it? Because he is possessed by the prince of demons. So when Jesus opens his mouth, the demons obey their boss who has taken over Jesus. They did not want to believe that Jesus was the vessel of the Holy Spirit. Instead, they interpreted his miraculous actions, liberating people from the clutches of the evil one as a sign. He is a collaborator of the demons. At sa ang galing yun? The scribes from Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, a holy city, yet also ambivalent, the place of the temple, yet also the place where prophets are maligned and killed. O oh, Jerusalem, the place where sacrifices are offered to God, yet also the place where people are sacrificed because of ambition, greed, rigidity. O oh, Jerusalem, but in all of this, King David gives thanks and takes over Jerusalem. Jesus will give thanks even with the rejection by Jerusalem. What does it mean to give thanks? Nag-research ako ng kaunti. 
Kasi ako mismo ngayon, di ko na naintindihan. Ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng magpasalamat? Dapat ka ba talagang magpasalamat? What, what generates that sense of gratitude welling up to thanksgiving? In the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, he says, Admonish the idle, cheer the faint-hearted, support the weak, be patient with all, see that no one returns evil for evil, rather, Always seek what is good for each other and for all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. For that is the will of God for you. In Christ Jesus. You want to scratch your head. Huh? In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. So for St. Paul, it is not just give thanks, but give thanks in Christ Jesus. Give thanks through Christ Jesus. Then we will learn the true meaning of thanksgiving. Then we understand why St. Paul can say, in the midst of your mission, admonish the idol Pakikinggan ka ba ng idol? Hindi. Kahit anong sabihin niya, sabihin mo, idol yan. Cheer the faint-hearted. Yung malungkod. Sabihin mo, Ay, magsaya ka. Gusto ko malungkod. Support the weak. Be patient with all. That's enough to stop giving thanks. But, give thanks in Christ Jesus. Who admonished the idol, who cheered the faint-hearted, who supported the weak, and who was patient with all, who never returned evil for evil, even when he was misjudged. And he prayed without ceasing. It is by doing what Jesus does or did that we might understand what thanksgiving means. In the letter to the Ephesians, St. Paul says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Give thanks always and for everything. <laughs> always and for everything. But he adds, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father. Don't give thanks according to your criteria and norms kapag tayo lang ang namili kung kailan magpapasalamat, siguro mas maraming reklamo kaysa pasalamat. Pero ang sabi ni San Pablo, magpasalamat sa ngalan ni Jesus. Hindi sa pangalan natin. At kung sa pangalan ni Jesus, magpapasalamat lagi at para sa lahat.
Ja. Kasi mass of thanksgiving ito eh, no? The letter to the Colossians. Sabi ni San Pablo, Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Ayun na naman. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God the Father through Him. This is a beautiful line. When we do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, whether in word or in deed, it is an occasion to give thanks to the Father through Him. Giving thanks. It is recognizing God who is good whose mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. To the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. We don't give thanks because I got this, I got that. We don't give thanks because I won the lottery, I won the bingo. I don't give thanks because my enemy, ah, nada pa, booting ah. The object of thanksgiving is I behold the Lord who is good, who is always good. The God that we may not always understand, but in faith we know God is good. God's designs are not our designs. Sometimes God's designs disrupt our plans. But we say, I believe God is good. We fall. We falter. We are disappointed with ourselves. But we know God is good and His mercy endures forever. That's the reason for thanksgiving, God. And what can we give to God as an act of thanksgiving? St. Paul says, do everything in the name of Christ. It is not just saying salamat, thank you, but it is leading our lives, doing everything in word and deed in the name of Christ. That is thanksgiving to God. The Eucharist. The word Eucharist means thanksgiving. How did Jesus give thanks to the Father? This is my body for you. This is my blood for you. The moment of death was the moment of supreme 
thanksgiving. A thanksgiving in the darkness of, of the horror of death. But the conviction, God is good. His mercy endures forever. So I will give my body, I will give my blood as a living, pleasing sacrifice an act of thanksgiving. My dear brothers and sisters in the Archdiocese of Manila, let that be our daily thanksgiving to the Lord. In whatever we do in word and deed, do it with Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let every action be Eucharistic. This is me. This is my body. For you, God, and for you, my neighbors. That is thanksgiving in the way and the name of Jesus. And I want to thank all of you for such a witness of that giving of self to the Archdiocese in all circumstances, whether ple pleasant or not. You have always been there. Our fellow priests, the religious, the lay people, our collaborators, it is a never-ending Eucharist in the way of Jesus. Here I am to serve. This is my body. This is my blood. Thanksgiving. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Please stand. Gathered together in Christ who conquers all evil, let us come confidently to the Father with our prayerful intentions. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may be renewed and give faithful witness to the proper values of life, and so help restore a fallen world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That warring nations may learn to live in harmony and mutual cooperation in bringing peace to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all believers in Christ may overcome division and become one in the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the sick, especially those who are handicapped, may receive comfort and attention from those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the faithful departed may be delivered from the evil of eternal death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and for our personal intentions. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God our Father, keep healing us from all evil and let your goodness shine in us by the power of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. For the gifts you have bestowed, O Lord, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, humbly begging that what you have conferred upon us in our unworthiness we may give back to the glory of your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. 
For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Louis Antonio, our Bishop, his assistant bishop, 
and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, 
but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul shall be healed.
please stand. Let us pray. O God, who have given to us a spir as spiritual food the saving sacrament of your Son, which we have offered you in thanksgiving, grant that, being strengthened by gifts of courage and joy, we may serve you more devotedly and be worthy of still further blessings. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Your Eminence, your message to us this evening is indeed apt that we should give thanks to the Lord. Of course, every departure, every separation brings pain. But if we look at it on the other side, we in the Archdiocese of Manila have been very much privileged in these eight years that you have been with us. We have been privileged that you have been our shepherd. We have heard your teachings in different occasions, but most especially, we have seen your great effort, although you are very much limited because of the other international commitments for the whole church, but your great effort to be able to serve us. Even if you are tired after having come from half of the world, and yet you make the effort to give talks, to join in our meetings and lead our meetings, even to visit us when somebody has died in the family, when somebody has gone sick, you really take time to be with us, to make us feel your presence. We appreciate very much your ministry among us. And although you are already in another part of the world, but we will hold this privilege deep in our hearts. We will always be able to say, Cardinal Chito has been our Archbishop. So we are grateful for these opportunities, and I would like to express this gratitude in the name of the whole Archdiocese, in the name of the clergy, of the religious, of the lay people, for your presence among us and for being a shepherd to us during these past years. We assure you of our prayers. You can always count on our support. And if in case you feel tired of the work on that part of the world, be sure, dear eminence, that you have a home among us here in Manila. Thank you very much. Please stand. We as a people will pray over our cardinal as a sign of our connectedness and our solidarity with him. Can we please extend our hands in prayer as we pray together? Heavenly Father, in Luis Antonio, our Archbishop, you gave us a shepherd. Thank you for his heart 
conform in the likeness of the Good Shepherd, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who knows His sheep and whose sheep know Him. We thank you for His gift of showing us Christ's compassion to all who are poor and in pain. Send us your path of all who are lost. Thank you for your voice, who like the Good Shepherd preached the unwavering truth of the Gospel to victims of oppression, injustice, and violence. We thank you for the grace of showing Christ the light of the world to those who have lost hope and Christ the healer to those caught in sin's deceit. Thank you for consecrating him to the truth, for worthily celebrating your sacred mysteries and for governing and protecting your holy church with a father's heart. Protect him with your loving embrace. Hold him by the hand and keep him close to your heart as he embarks on his new mission. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. After the Mass, the bishops will have a photo opportunity with the Cardinal. After the bishops will be the Manila clergy. After the photo op, may we request the priest to proceed to the Adoration Chapel and leave their vestments there. You may exit through the door of the Adoration Chapel. Everyone will receive a packed dinner as you exit the cathedral. May we just request that you keep our surroundings and parks clean. Thank you. Let us now stand for the final blessing. Ah, salamat po ulit, ho. salamat po ulit. Pasalamatan, samahan niyo ako magpasalamat sa ating mga bishops na nandito. Kay Cardinal Gaudencio Rosales, salamat po. And all the bishops uh, with us. And Monsignor uh, Julian Cabore of the Nunciature. Now, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, salamat po sa ating mga ka kapatid na pari. No po. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, to the religious uh, men and women here, we'll see you on the 2nd of February. We still have a gathering. So, pero yung mga nandito, salamat po, salamat na po. And uh, to uh, the, 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 the lay people in the different ministries and offices and boards of uh, the Archdiocese of Manila, salamat po, mabuhay po kayo. Mabuhay, salamat po, salamat. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
Tuloy Rani Geraldino Rani Geraldino Hindi ka makita Jack Jack Arata Jack Jack Arata Herbert Camaso Hindi ka makita Herbert Camaso Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you.